different challenge coins uh, of every unit in the department. We met with the commissioner inside his office, and right out the gate, he teed off against his critics. So the great fears that were generated in large part by the media and by the political establishment, a new mayor coming in, 2014, Armageddon, the sky's going to fall, city's going to go to hell in the handbasket. Sorry, didn't happen, and it's not going to happen. We're not going back to the bad old days, so... Let's get over it and just uh, stop trying to tear the city down. Let's start celebrating the success of this city. Greatest city in the world, 8.5 million people. It is a city that works. So instead of tearing it apart all the time, let's start taking a look at uh, just how good this place is. Do we have our faults? We certainly do. Do we have our faults in this department? We certainly do. But by and large, we're doing pretty well. Good news for you and this region in terms of crime is down the good news but the perception the perception in the city of new york the perception on long island the perception in the hudson valley the perception is just the opposite commissioner perception is driven by uh, a number of things one what people might see in their particular neighborhood two what they see in the news your medium or three what they read in the papers perfect example of that is this morning's uh, New York Post editorial. If you read the New York Post editorial, the sky is falling, Armageddon has arrived in New York, even as they talk about crime being down 5.8% over the last two years, and crime being down for the last 25 years every year for 25 years. The Daily News editorial, uh, they talk about how safe New York and celebrate. The sun is out, all is well in New York, and it's getting better all the time. So there's a example of perspective being driven by newspaper bias, newspaper reporting of the issue. How do you um, argue against the fact that overall crime in the city is down by 75 percent, homicides are down by 81 percent since the early 1990s? We had 105,000 reported crimes last year versus the five or 600,000 reported crimes in the early 1990s each year. Uh, I'm sorry, this is America's safest large city. Individuals might have their perception of it, but uh, uh, this is America's safest large city. And I know it bothers some people and bothers some newspapers and bothers some media types, uh, some political types, but the city keeps getting safer. Surprise, surprise. But there are some upticks, Commissioner, <clears throat> as you said yourself. Um, in terms of rape, Rape is up, I believe, 6%? That's correct. That uh, the Rape was up, robbery was up 2%, homicides were up. But once again, let's take it into context. Rape, a significant part of that increase in rape was due to late reports. People coming forward to report rapes that in some instances that occurred many years before. Every rape is of concern. We encourage people to report the rape so we can get the serial rapists that we can effectively try to reduce it. Robberies up 2%, a couple of hundred incidents. Uh, in terms of murders, murders are up by, I think, a total of 17 murders in a city of 8.5 million people. 350 murders back in uh, 1990, we had 2,243 murders. So crime spikes from time to time. When it spikes, we put additional resources on it. We attempt to determine what's happening with it. Uh, case in point, <coughs> on the issue of rapes, we had seen an uptick in rape incidents involving women, young women coming out of bars, highly intoxicated, getting into taxis, yellow and green, getting into livery cabs, and then being assaulted in their totally intoxicated state by those drivers. Those reports are important to us because then it prevents those drivers from doing it again if we can make the arrest. But one of the ways to prevent that is the idea that buddy system. Uh, we have designated drivers, three of you drink, one drives, doesn't drink. Similarly, that if you're going to drink yourself into a state of total intoxication, well, have somebody take